Hello, Sioux Trail friends. This is your recess EA, Miss Hajra. I'm going to read a book with you guys today by Jan Brett, Daisy Comes Home. So here we go, Daisy Comes Home. Look over the garden wall and you will see the six happiest hens in China. They live in Mei Mei's sandy yard by the Li River where they lay brown eggs every day for Mei Mei to sell at the market. But it was not always this way. Once upon a time, the smallest hen, the one Mei Mei calls Daisy, was picked on by all the others. This is hard to imagine because Mei Mei was known far and wide for her happy hens. She gave them treats, she put fresh hay in their nests, she gave them baths when they fell in the black mud, and when she called Goo Goo, Goo Goo, all the hens would run to her as fast as their legs could carry them. Even Mei Mei's egg baskets were painted with big red characters that read Happy Hens and she tried to make it so. But every night when it was time to roost in the hen house, the other hens picked on Daisy. They fluffed up their feathers and crowded her off the perch. They jostled her until peck, one or the other pushed her and thump, off she fell. Then the hens tucked their heads into their feathers and went to sleep while poor little Daisy was stuck below on the damp mud floor, shivering and cold until morning. One day it rained all day and the hens stayed inside. When it got dark, they flew up to their perch except for Daisy. She had had enough of pushy hens and cold damp floors. She went outside to find a place to spend the night. Down on the river bank, she spied on one of the market baskets. She snuggled in and fluffed up her feathers to stay warm. Daisy was sleeping and didn't see the river creeping up the bank from all the rain. And when the water reached her happy hen's basket, she didn't feel it float out onto the river. But when the basket started tipping and bobbing, Daisy woke up. She peeked out and saw a watery world all around her. The sandy yard, the garden wall, and Mei Mei's farmhouse looked smaller and smaller as the current carried her down the river. Finally, the basket bumped against a stone jetty where a houseboat was tied up. Scratch, scratch, scraped the basket as the river waves pushed it against the sharp rocks. A dog was sitting up on the deck of the houseboat. When he saw the plump hen bobbing in the basket, he barked and scrambled towards her. Daisy squawked and pecked and the beat the air with her wings. It was enough to tip the basket off the rocks and she floated away just in time. Dawn broke over the Gui Mountains as the basket drifted along the river. Branches brushed against it Fish swam silently by the birds flew overhead. Suddenly, Daisy felt a thump. Daisy looked up and saw two big horns and a pair of surprised eyes looking down at her. The basket had drifted into the legs of a great big water buffalo taking a morning drink. The buffalo snorted loudly, scaring Daisy. She flew forward and nipped his furry muzzle and flapped and flapped her wings. Daisy scared the water buffalo. He turned and galloped up the bank, scattering the ducks as he ran. His splashes made waves that carried the basket back into the middle of the river. Daisy traveled along all day until her basket was hooked by the roots of a banyan tree, where a troop of red-tailed monkeys lived. The curious monkeys eyed Daisy and climbed down for a closer look. 
Daisy froze as one monkey crept up to the basket and reached in. Daisy flapped and pecked, nipped and squawked. The startled monkey pushed the basket away. It broke loose from the tree and floated on down the river. Daisy wondered what would happen next. Up ahead, Daisy saw a fisherman with cormorants diving all around his bamboo boat. They were catching fish and taking them to him for a reward. The fisherman felt a soft bump behind him. Thinking it was a cormorant, he reached back and grabbed. How surprised he was to see that he was holding a hen instead of a cormorant. Finder's keeper, he exclaimed. Little fish, big fish, silver fish, white fish, that's what I sell at the market, but today I will have this tender young chicken. He put a net over the basket and headed to shore with poor Daisy inside. At home, May May had looked all day and all night for her little Daisy. She wasn't in the hen house. She wasn't behind the farmhouse. She couldn't fly over the wall. Where is she? May May wondered worried all the time about what had happen happened to Daisy. Finally, she knew that she had to go to the market. With a sad feeling, she packed her eggs in their baskets and started on her way. As the baskets swung back and forth, the red characters on the side of her baskets made May May feel sadder and sadder. Happy hens, she said, aloud to herself. What about my Daisy? Where can she be? At the market, May May found a place and arranged the eggs in clean, sweet-smelling straw. All morning, shoppers bought her fresh brown eggs, but she couldn't stop thinking about her little lost hen. May May heard a voice calling to her. It was her friend Zhang, yelling from the back of the bike cart. A fisherman has a happy hen's basket, he shouted. What? She called, not understanding what he was saying. A happy hen's basket, he repeated. You'd better hurry up because he's showing off what's inside. Daisy, May May shouted. May May raced to where the fish were sold. There was Daisy, beautiful and plump in her basket, surrounded by a crowd, all wanting to buy her. That's my hen, she cried to the fisherman, but his face was like stone. She pointed to the red characters on the basket. Happy hands, she said. The fisherman crossed his arms. Finders, keepers, he growled and turned away to sell Daisy. Maymay was about to leave, but her eyes rested on those characters. Happy hands. All she could think about was Daisy in a cooking pot. She squeezed her eyes shut and clenched her fist. She had to do something. Goo goo, goo goo, goo goo, she called at the top of her voice. And when Daisy heard that call, she answered it the way she had every day of her life. She rose up and threw herself against the basket, tipping it over. She ran toward her friend May May as fast as her legs could go. Daisy flew onto May May's shoulder and off they went, running back to get May May's basket and go home. The fisherman ran after them, furious. Stop, he yelled at May May. That's my hen. Finders keepers, May May called over her shoulder. And with, and with Daisy clinging to her, she ran and didn't stop until they were safely home. That night, as the sun went down, Daisy took a place on the roost. When one of the big hens fluffed up her wings and spread out, expecting Daisy to fall off the perch like always, Daisy flapped her wings. I learned that from a boat dog, she clucked. Another hen tried to tip her off. She pushed right back. I scared a water buffalo like that, she squawked. Another hen jostled her. Peck, 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 peck. Daisy kept her place on the perch and beat the air with her wings. She remembered the monkey and she pecked and flapped all over again.
That was when the hens gave Daisy a place of her own. The lap, lap, lap of the river made a peaceful nighttime song. No bumping, no jostling, no fussing around, just six happy hens. Their heads tucked in their feathers, high and warm and safe together. I hope you enjoyed listening to my story, Daisy Comes Home. I would like to leave with you guys with this message. Hold your head up, always hold it high. Look the world straight in the eye. Thank you.